Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm going to be taking you through a beautiful journey of the night sky in the month of June. We're going to be visiting several deep sky objects and we're going to see what the moon and the planets are up to. So as always, buckle in and let's see what's really out there. First off, we're going to stay in our local neighborhood and we're going to see what the moon and the planets are up to this month. We are heavily dedicating this portion of what's in the night sky to Venus and Mars. The other five planets can be seen early in the morning just before or after twilight, but tonight we're going to be focusing on Venus and Mars, our two closest neighbors. Last December, we were able to see every planet in the evening sky, but now we're left with two, Venus and Mars. Fortunately, these planets will put on quite the show for binocular observers as they both pass through the Beehive Cluster this month. Venus starts June in Gemini, but joins Mars in Cancer on the 3rd. It reaches its greatest elongation from the Sun the next day, when it will remain above the horizon for another 3 hours after sunset. Mars watchers will be carefully tracking the red planet as it moves through the Beehive Cluster during the first three days of the month. If nothing else, be sure to note that on the second day, Mars appears in the thickest of the cluster stars. It'll remain within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view as the Beehive Cluster until June 11th. Venus pulls a similar trick from the 7th onwards. Low powered binoculars may be able to show Venus, Mars, and the Beehive Cluster within the same field of view from this date to the 16th. But keep in mind the cluster will be low over the western horizon and may be difficult to spot, especially given the brightness of Venus. After passing the Beehive Cluster, both planets can be seen within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view for the remainder of the month. Mars crosses into Leo on the 20th and is joined by Venus on the 26th. The two will be closest together from June 29th to July 1st. Mars and Venus are currently a beautiful sight in the night sky. Venus is exceptionally bright and Mars just glows that vivid red color. So if you have a telescope or binoculars, we urge you to go outside and take a look. Now, if spring is considered galaxy season, summer should be considered the globular cluster season. Our first deep sky object on our tour of the night sky in the month of June is Messier 4. Messier 4 is a bright globular cluster easily found about midway between Antares and Al Nayat and Scorpius. If you live under reasonably dark skies, you should be able to spot it with binoculars, through which it will appear as a fairly bright hazy patch. Otherwise, you may need a telescope to spot it. A low magnification of about 40 times may be enough to start resolving the cluster with averted vision. Double the magnification to 80 and you'll also see a prominent bar of stars that crosses the cluster from north to south. Larger scopes will reveal chains and clumps of stars scattered throughout Messier 4. As we go through this list, we are going to visit a few other globular clusters, but keep in mind, visually speaking, when viewing these, the larger the scope, the more spectacular that these will be through your eyepiece. A 4-inch refractor may present these as a pretty cool sight, but a large 14 or 16-inch Dobsonian makes these kinds of views simply unforgettable. The next deep sky object on our list is Messier 5, another fantastic globular cluster. In fact, one of the best globular clusters in the night sky, Messier 5 can be found southwest of Alpha Serpentis and Anukalhai. It appears within the same low powered field of view as 5 Serpentis. This star provides an excellent reference point for focusing your telescope as once the star appears nice and sharp, there's no mistaking the star cluster. Even through binoculars, M5 is obviously non-stellar. It appears as a tiny, misty circular patch with a star-like tour. Now, Messier 4 and Messier 5 are show-stopper globular clusters, but that doesn't mean there are none other on the list. Take a look at Messier 80, another awesome globular star cluster. Messier 80 lies 4 degrees to the northwest of Messier 4, but is nearly 4 times further away. If the two clusters were to swap positions, the situation would be reversed. Messier 80 would look slightly brighter than M4 is now, and M4 would appear roughly the same brightness as Messier 80. 
M80 lies within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view as Antares, Alneat, and M4. And while it's detectable in binoculars, it really is best suited for telescopic observations with larger equipment. Now the next deep sky object on our list is not a globular cluster this time, nor is it really a deep sky object, but rather a double star, Beta Scorpii. Otherwise known as Grapheus, it is an attractive multiple star that almost anyone can enjoy, especially those with a telescope. Binoculars will show a white star with a fainter white companion, but a telescope will reveal a third star. With a low magnification of about 25 times, you'll be able to split the brighter star into two. Now we arrive at our last object on our tour of the night sky in the month of June. It is in fact another double star. You may have heard of this one. It goes by the name of Izar. This multiple star can be a challenge for beginners and owners of small scopes as the two components are separated by only 2.9 arc seconds. The primary is a brilliant golden star while the secondary typically appears blue-green, although some have even reported a purple hue. You'll likely need to use a magnification of at least 100 times and ideally a larger aperture scope to split it. A cool fact about the star system is that they are thought to orbit each other once every 1,000 years. All right, well, that is our tour of the night sky in the month of June. We thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any comments or questions, let us know below. And if you've viewed any of these objects, maybe you've viewed them through a large telescope, a small telescope, or even had the chance to photograph them, please let us know. We love to hear your stories. That being said, we thank you so much for tuning in. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel so you do not miss any future content over all things astronomy and astrophotography. Thank you so much and clear skies.